Hey folks, this is IO Ether, and we're back with some more World of Tanks. As you can see, this is Extreme Unicorn Warfare and is Object 260. This is a tank I can't wait to get my hands on. I don't know if I ever will, but we'll see. <laughs> um, for now, this should be um, a game. It's quite a bit of fun to watch. Um, this is the Tier 10 Reward Tank for doing all the campaign missions. Um, or at least, yeah, doing all the campaign missions, and, uh, yeah. Uh, this is, of course, a tier 10 game on Ensk, which I totally, totally remembered to talk about earlier. Um, so we're going to start with him putting a great shot. That should have gone in. That, that should have gone in. <laughs> oh, I hit just slightly low. Can I um take control of this camera here? Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna zoom in a little bit further. Nope, nope. There we go. So he hit right here, which is uh the tracks, which is why he only got the the thing. But anyways, if he you hit right here, it's actually a panel about this big. On FE215B, while it's backing up, it will go in because of the fact that, um, so the FE is, is side scraping right now, and so most of this location, uh, you shoot it, you're just gonna ricochet off, uh, you're not gonna be able to pen anything except for the cupola and his lower glacius right now, except for this little bit right here, uh, because of the way that the rest of his tank, um, is effectively heavily ink, oops. My bad. Uh, the fact the rest of the tank is effectively really heavily angled, but that one section is angled normally, so right now it's flat onto you, and thus um, it doesn't take uh, it takes very little penetration compared to everything else to go right through that spot, which is what I thought he hit, which is definitely what he was aiming at. The shot, shot so you can see that the, the patch much better right now. It's right here. It's definitely what he's aiming at. He's aiming dead center of it, and earlier the shot just went up a slight bit uh, lower than normal. You can see that even when the um, the FV two one five B is pulling it, it hasn't revealed its lower play yet. It hasn't even got his gun around the corner yet. We can already hit this panel really, really easily, um, assuming you know where you're shooting. And so, our right, we're gonna watch as goes ahead and puts again another shot bounces that's because again it dips low weird it hits the same sh place twice when he aims for exactly the right spot twice that's um it's a little disconcerting but okay so he's got the uh <laughs> got tracked now we put our shot into the spot he was actually aiming for and uh the fv is trying to get away a little bit doesn't like that somebody actually knows where to hit him, and now that we've. Uh, now that he's not gonna give us the same weak spot, there's no point in hanging around here, and. Extreme is moving on. Um. And we have a whole invasion coming around through the backside of our base because of the fact that we didn't deploy anyone over there. Oh! Oh, that was a good. I was gonna say, that'd be a great shot to hit. As he moves across, and then of course he actually goes ahead and clips the guy, and um, now he's moving into a. It's a good spot for cover, but it's easily flanked. Uh, the bat shot shows us right now, <laughs> but he gets a interesting shot into the back bat shot as it goes around him. Um, and unfortunately, our fuel tank was damaged, and hopefully we don't get we don't fire as we don't have a repair kit. He's running um, a premium consumable instead of a repair kit. So if he gets a bit on fire because of that damaged fuel tank, we're just going to go up like a torch or a Roman candle. Um, I don't know what that STB-1 is doing as he just kind of seems to be sh shimming around in place. But, um, well, <laughs> Extreme put a shot into him to kind of prove to him that shimming around in place is not the best play in the world. I have seen something that extremists obviously not seen. 
Um, or if he has seen it, he's not paying any attention to her. That's a 183. If we back out too far and that guy actually comes around this corner, or just puts his gun around the corner, or, uh -huh, look at that. Noticing it at the same time as I do, or, um, who's paying attention to it at the same time as I notice it, which is probably more likely, actually. As, uh, let's face it, he is better, the extreme is better than most of us, and, um, <laughs> definitely better than I am. He's going, attacking this object 140, now that he sees the opportunity, he's, because of the fact that his, uh, he's in this little cubby, his lower glacis is protected, he's loaded up a shell, and puts through the upper glacis of the 140. Penetration on the rounds is 260. Um, good enough to go through, especially with a little bit of a downward trajectory. His partner takes out the Vachat. Forgot to note that he's in a platoon with uh, Crow Cop Warrior. Um, unfortunately, as I go ahead and announce Crow Cop, he dies. So maybe I shouldn't announce anyone's name anymore. Ooh, nice shot into the 183. Knowing the 183 was on a Rigo, he goes ahead and puts his front end towards the T57 Heavy. Heavy must be on a reload, and we track him, but we don't do much other than that. Um, he's got to get himself out of this spot, though. I'm going to pause it for a second. Ah, come on. Zoom out, camera. Nope, I can't zoom out. No, there we go. Finally. No, that's as far out as the camera will go. Anyways, with the 183 there, uh, the 183 is going to reload pretty soon, and the T57 Heavy is definitely going to reload soon. And the problem is he doesn't really have much backup. He's got a grill, but currently the grill is aiming through another tank on the batch at, which is never going to work. Um, and there's a dead 183 behind him. Uh, this is a, this is a great place to die if you're sitting out in the open here. Uh, if that T-57 comes around the corner when he's loaded in a few seconds, and he... Uh, he can, he has the potential to kill us in a single clip. It only takes him a handful of seconds to unload that entire clip uh, because of the fact that he's American and there is like a two second delay between shells. So he'll fire uh, all four of his shells in like five seconds. Seven seconds, something like that. Um... We, we really can't stay here. We definitely can't one-shot him. Uh, and so he's got to get out of this area. And there's an E4 over there. So he's got to get out of this area without getting shot by the E4. There isn't many places he can go. He, uh, he can't. He's not going to have enough time to run back down and then turn. Um, the only thing I th see him being able to do is he might be able to get on the other side of this grill and use the grill and the dead bat chat as cover or get over here and hope he can deal with only the E4 and his and then and then use the grill as bait kind of thing to uh, so that when the T57 comes around the corner he'll be concentrating on the grill and not on us and hope you can survive well you can survive one shot from the E4 and it looks like he's going at, yeah, he's going to go on, take on the E4. He knows he can survive a single shot. The E4 actually shoots the, at the grill, actually hitting the grill, and meaning that we can take him out easily enough. Oh yeah, done deal. And the T57 Heavy gets taken out by a Yagzilla. <sighs> okay. Um, our T57 t takes out the object who was doing something that involves suicide. Um, unfortunately, we're not... Okay, this was a... This is the only mistake I've seen him make all game. And that is he came around this corner without being loaded. Um, he came around this corner with still, like, a good six or seven seconds left on that reload. If he'd come around the corner with a second left on the reload, I'd understand. Uh, he would have also probably caught the flank of the 183. But because of the fact that he waited, or that he didn't wait and he just charged around the corner, he sat in the open and let the 183 aim on him for several seconds. He should be glad that he didn't get 
one-shotted right there because that was close. That was almost the end of his game. Um, Grill is going to go ahead and snag the kill on the 183, and I understand he probably wanted that kill, but by charging in the corner without being loaded, he was never going to get the kill anyway, and it only served to almost get him killed. So, just while you're doing everything else and being awesome, remember don't come around a corner when you're without being loaded unless you know that there is no enemy there or you're willing to risk it, but it's not worth the risk nine times out of ten. Especially with something that can kill you on the other side. Um, he got lucky in the 183 missed, and now he's got to chase down a STR, STRV 103B. Um, the upside about this tank is it's really fast. The upside about the STR, well, the downside for us about the STRV is it's really fast, and it's going in reverse, which means his gun is going to be pointed in this direction. He tracks us. We track him, do damage to him, and artillery hits him. That's all good. He's pushing in, but again, the STRV can run away and still shoot at us. Though, currently he's running away into a wall. And that... <laughs> Last stand! <laughs> Uh, I paused it. I didn't realize things moved when you paused it. That's so beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Stuff's still moving. That's awesome. Yeah, you know, so that means that the game doesn't actually freeze when you hit the pause button. It just decreases the amount, like it, it slows down the play so much that it looks like it's paused, but it isn't. I, I didn't know that before. Tell me that isn't the coolest thing. Can I get a like for the the slow mo here? <laughs> I I didn't okay, I should get into this game again. <laughs> I didn't know that, that happened. Did you? This was a great game and um <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Ace tanker, bruiser, fighter, fire for fact, confederate and a high caliber. Wow. Well done, sir. Good job. Uh, 6k damage, 4 kills, 1300 experience, and just the top carry I've seen in a long time. This was a, uh, a great game, and he was by far the best player on his team. Um, wow, look at that. <laughs> Total hunter spying damage, because why not add some more and unfortunately he didn't make anything on this game but still completely worth it um note that if he hadn't um hadn't been using the premium consumable he would have made um some money on this game also note for extreme unicorn and anyone else who buys and runs premium consumables every once in a while like once or twice a year wargaming puts all the consumables on sale for half off. If you buy a bunch of them, like more than you will ever use in a year, then you'll you'll basically it'll only cost you ten grand from then on for a premium consumable. And that's honestly the way I run all of my tanks is off of half price consumables that I buy once a year uh, when we're going to put them on sale. I literally dropped three million in credits into <laughs> repair kits, med kits, and uh, manual fire extinguishers, and then a couple, of, you know, half a million other things, half a million credits into other things, and thus have basically half price consumables for the rest of the year. It will save you money. Uh, use it if you can remember it. 
But overall, this was a great game and uh, a ton of fun to watch. One tiny mistake almost got him killed, but then he corrects for it and just went ahead and smashed a STRV for the fun and the win. Thank you all for watching. Uh, please, if you liked this video, please do hit the like button, especially for that slow-mo near the end, right? And I will see you all next time. This IOE throughout. out.